Hey guys, DMS here again today with my buddy Dalton again. We're going to be doing another album review, this time on the Omwalsh 3000s. A little bit different from last time, but we are checking out the Oliver Tree album, Do You Feel Me? And you haven't listened to Oliver Tree before this album. No, that's um, the first time I've ever heard Oliver Tree, and I've heard his name. My friends have told me to check him out, and I just mm -hmm. haven't gotten around to it. Um, so I was excited when uh, you told me this is the album we're going to do. Well, EP, I apologize. Right, EP. Because we, we only have um, six tracks here, so it's pretty short. Yeah. Not a whole lot going on. Um, but we just listened to it, figured we'd do that off camera. Uh, and I took some notes, you took some notes. So um, I guess let's, uh, let's start at the top. Um, so First song, uh, what was it called? Introspective. Introspective. Um, again, this is my first introduction to Oliver Tree. It was the first song I've ever heard by him mm -hmm. um i love the mix i love the vocal effects the way that he does and it, and it shows through on the other tracks i can tell how he's recording and it's multiple tracks and not necessarily just right. layered it's um kind of a little bit offset i think and it's different keys mm -hmm. or different deliveries um i think that it also might have to do with the way that the synths and different instruments interact with his vocal Right. Um, but I thought that was very, very interesting to hear that full body sound like that. Yeah, it was. It's a very nostalgic sound that first track is for me. Yeah. It's like I, the first thing I wrote was like 2000s summertime sound. But it's got kind of a different message to it. The song's it, a little bit vague in meaning. It's not like super clear, but introspective, the art of looking within oneself. And I think, I think that was all the goal was, and it's supposed to be very heavily up for interpretation. Mm -hmm. And I could be wrong, I, but that's just first first glance, first listen, that's that's the way it seems to me, at least. There were a couple breakdowns when I wrote this sounded like it was trying to be a 21 Pilots song. I could also see that as well. <laughs> I think the same could be said, like, in a totally different genre, but Florida Georgia Line. Yeah. How there's I just, like, that. these weird instrumental, like, techno electronic breakdowns it's cool and it adds a little bit to it sometimes takes a little bit away but overall first track was very solid i i loved that as an intro i thought it was the perfect length mm -hmm. um it wasn't too overpowering yeah it wasn't it wasn't particularly lacking in any area just felt like it was like okay this is this is a put together track mm -hmm. like this this works um so after that we move on to number two miracle man um i remember you liked this one it has an interesting rhythm to it i think that kind of made it stand out uh, melody was cool. The lyrics to me were a little bit vague and a little bit repetitive, which seems to be kind of like a recurring theme with Oliver Tree. I felt like the song didn't have much to say. I think, and I think partially is that it has so little to say because it means so much to him. It could be. Like, um, one of the things that I said on this one was love the mixture of acoustic and electric instrumentation, another phenomenal vocal, the high notes that he hits, mm -hmm. and just the delivery of it is just he nails those high notes. Yeah, it's it's perfect. I mean, and it's and I don't know how much um, pitch correction they use on his voice, but it, it doesn't seem to be too much. He seems to be able to do it live, from what I've seen. Yeah, and like so, I said, I have like friends that have seen him live that said he's amazing. I've never I've never seen him live. I've never heard his music. So I thought this the hook was super infectious. And I think that was part of it being so trite and so simple. Yeah. Um, kind of really drives some of those things home sometimes. Um, when it is that simplistic of a lyric, those, those mm -hmm. good vocal techniques can go yeah. a long way. I think there's a couple areas where the repetitiveness of the lyrics, like repeating the same line for four bars, mm -hmm. I feel like there are some areas where he could have leveraged that to tell us a little bit more about whatever this story is. Because I think if, if that had been the case, I would have found myself more connected to it. But it's still technically worked as well see and when the clapping comes in is mm -hmm. when i realize he's making chant anthems mm -hmm. he's trying yep. to have people shout his lyrics at the top of their lungs at his concerts easy to remember yeah commend you for that one yeah so that was that was pretty interesting so third one is alien boy uh this was a single before the album came out i guess the previous one was technically two but it came out right before the album now, number three alien boy that one's been out for a while um Bass line drives it pretty good. The rhythm of it's definitely different from the other tracks. It's got some interesting percussive sounds in it. I noted his vocal range, again, can go up to some pretty decent lengths without it sounding like he's straining himself too much. Uh, I feel like this song had a lot more effort in it lyrically. 
yes. than some of the previous ones because there's a, a lot there's just like if you look at just the content of how many words are even in this song it far surpasses well the and it's words. those stumbling cadences that I was talking about where it's mm-hmm. just like he just rolls into the next line it's it's almost like uh, and I hate to put it this way because it's not that monotonous but like punching a time clock where yeah. it's just like kind of like the same thing yep. We're metronome in three two next line yeah yeah yeah, and and I thought that was really cool. Uh, one thing I will say is um, I did not like the production on this one, anything about it. I yeah, don't. this song can sound really bright at times. Like some of the high notes, and the percussion's interesting, but the production on the percussion can be really, at times, some notes it hits with that like that high, uh, it's not a hi-hat, but it's like a high-pitched, some sort of electronic quip. Yeah. And it just, every time it hits, it's like... Uh, well, and that one, it was so overpowering in mm-hmm. that song that it literally distracted from the whole thing. And I was just yeah. trying to focus on what he was saying. And I feel like, and and this, and after listening to the project, this was kind of the consensus I came to, is that I feel like him as an artist and his writing, and I don't know if there are any other writers involved, is the most impressive part about it. And the yeah. singing and the vocal techniques, rather than the full production. I not yeah. a fan of it in, in entirety. It's a sound like his his sound as a whole does. It pulls from a lot of things mm-hmm. um, that make it sound like you know a repeat of something we've heard before. But it it, do, it is actually something that in this day and age I feel like is kind of unique in the current landscape. Oh yeah, I mean he's it's obvious that his influences and what he grew up on was he is a very very eclectic listener yeah. and eclectic artist um, with what his tastes are as far as that goes. Yeah. Um, breakdown pads felt pretty cool on it. Uh, good focus on the vocals here, even though it did get overpowered sometimes by the production, but they were um, definitely, like I said, more more well put together than the previous tracks. So after that is number four, which is called Do You Feel Me? Uh, first thing around this says it feels like a Justice song. Yeah, like straight up. That the just the the way that the bass is distorted, the way that it flows, the beat with it, it felt like a justice song. And which the, I like justice. The distortion really drives this track. Like yeah, it, it was very evident that that was the main thought when they, they probably had the really rough electric guitar at first, and then he started singing over, and they were mm-hmm. like, "Let's just mesh those because they blend perfectly together." Yeah, let's just do a ku cha ku cha and just focus on distorted bass. For Wait, this what? Track to drive it, just the like the rhythm for it. Four on the floor I really want you to do it again, but that's no, nope, never gonna do that again. <laughs> Damn. You get that, you got that on camera though. Yeah, so <laughs> there you go, preserved forever in uh, the internet. This one felt a little bit less randomly structured than some of the previous ones. There was one actually, I want to double check on something real quick because there was a track that I wrote something. Some of these tracks, th- th- not this one as much as the others, reminds me of when I first started making music like on like garage band yeah. stuff. And you know what, and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that in a bad way towards Oliver Tree, but it reminded me of how I would like find like a part that I liked and I'd play it out and I'd do that for four bars and then I'd put in another part that was four bars and not really have them cohesively connect. Sometimes it just jumps from one part to an entirely different theme. Yeah, like lacking in transition. Yeah, yeah. It, it felt like s- some songs really felt like they didn't know what they wanted to be um, and they would jump around a lot. This was the song that made me realize, like, that the depth in his vocals was not, like, an accidental thing, or that, yeah. like, it's like the layering uh, is, is phenomenal, the distortion on this track really drives it home very well, as well as, my only issue with this track was this is the one I was talking about a second ago, where the claps and the synths really killed it for me. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, I was really enjoying it, and then all of a sudden I heard a very figmented clap hop in there and I was like this is did they really just do this but yeah. again like everything else is so impressive that it's not something that makes me not want to ever listen to that song again right. or something the way I the way I'd put it too is you know I agree with you how Oliver Tree performs vocally and how he does have a good bit of depth to his vocals I think that while a lot of his tracks right now don't seem to cohesively align uh, with one another, that like I said, they kind of jump around. I feel like his vocals are his consistent uh, piece he brings to the table. Like he consistently Agreed. brings a vocal performance that sounds across the board thematic, even though the songs might not. Well, and even like, and and maybe not thematic in the production itself or the right. songs themselves, but like the content is all spot on. This yeah. uh, introspection, alien boy, it all right. 
it all made a lot of sense. I wasn't very like confused or lost. Like, what are you going for? Yeah. But yeah. I was. I was again. Yeah, like you said, I was most impressed by mm-hmm. his vocal. Um, that leads me into the next track. This next track is actually my favorite on the album. It's hurt. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was another single that came out before it, and this is actually the song that I've heard this song before. It introduced me to this artist, and it had a like a one point two million dollar budget for the music video or something. Oh, uh, I wouldn't doubt yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and they produced it, in, or they they filmed the video in Ukraine, which is interesting. This I I feel like as a whole, I think this was the most complete song, just from like a uh, a standpoint of how the production and mix is done, um, how everything aligns musically the song structure all that i feel like this is the one that's just the most rounded off and polished maybe not the best one on the entire album but i think it's the one they put the most time and effort into turning into a finished piece i agree and that was one of the notes that i took was that it was a happy medium between um three and four but yeah i think it was just a happy medium between between three and four i think that the reason that I gravitated to it so much was because it was so reminiscent of pop punk in the early 2000s. It yeah. was something that's very, very nostalgic for me. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh grade, somewhere around that time period, just being able to, you know, angsty, angry at your parents and or life or whatever. You don't even know mm-hmm. why you're in sixth grade. It feels thought through. Like this, this goes back to I think even like the the idea, the concept of the first track, which was introspection. Like it seems like this song as a whole, the message of whatever whatever exactly it is he's trying to perfectly convey here, lyrically he keeps it on track. It doesn't feel like it strays away from it. It feels like whatever it is he's trying to convey, whatever his specific situation was, because it's a little bit vague. It feels like this is something that's thought through and is projected very much in an intentive direction. And the sounds match the lyrics. Yeah, very every, well. The whole song is on track. It's thematic it's pushing it in exactly the direction i think he wants it to go in slightly ominous with a lot of anonymity mm-hmm. and anonymity i see an enemy <laughs> and anonymity yeah and it, and it and it made it uh just feed into the to the thoughts of i feel like it just and that's art it's all up for interpretation mm-hmm. and that was what was so cool about it is when the lyrics are as simple as oliver goes with especially on this project you get a sense of this can mean whatever it needs to mean to me, and that's all that matters. Yeah, and I, I mean, the I'm trying to think of lyrics of the chorus of this one. Um, I tried, but I don't think so. Maybe it was me who was fucking up. I right, gave all right. I can give. And I feel yeah. like everyone's been there before where it's exactly. like, you know, I did what I could do, but if we're being 100, that was definitely my fault. Right. Yeah. And like that's and that's all about introspection. That is yeah. a, a huge part of that that concept is you have to be able to look inside yourself and mm-hmm. realize that those those are your flaws even if you didn't handle it in the situation as best possible. And even then the situation the song like there's something that's happening here but the situation is you know, we don't even need to know the situation. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The the story and the lesson is what's most important. Yeah, exactly. And the story and the lesson is what I feel like he's trying to, or the lesson itself in the story is what he's trying to project here. Right. And I think that he nailed it. Like yeah, on that 100%. one straight up nailed it. So, yeah, that one, I, I felt really solid about that. And then we just got one left, because this is a very short piece. The last one is All Bets Are Off. I didn't, I didn't feel this track at all, honestly. Yeah. It was the most experimental-sounding track. Um, it had a bit of a groove to it, but this, this one lost me. All right, I'm going to give you my note, like it or not. Here's my hot take on that song. This sounds like a bad Gwen Stefani track with a great writer and a guy singing her parts featuring Diane Word. Yeah. And 100%. that's just it. like Oliver great great EP. I loved it. There were parts that I didn't like, but that song you could have left it off. Yeah. I think that it, I mean it, it it didn't feel like it belonged with this No, piece. it was very different and that's yeah. fine be as different as you want to be, but you just made a project that's supposed to keep cohesion. Yeah, and it felt it felt original, but But I I feel like that's a testament of, of you told me that most of these songs were singles before the project came out. Yeah, I think, um, I can find out exactly how many it was. I think three out of the six songs were singles. And that's a big uh, technique as of late of just, of ways to market your music is mm -hmm. it's it's a singles game. So like, you know, people are trying to put out a single, tracks do not have the runtime or life and longevity that they used to. Right. So what, what artists will do is they'll drop three singles and then put it out with three more singles as the EP which is not a problem it's just the last track feels like that one was rushed or it was just something that was in 
his files from sessions he'd done before and was like, oh, that one will work. Now, here's the interesting thing. Um, The song Alien Boy. Mm -hmm. This has already been on his... That was on his previous EP. This is the thing that confuses me. His previous EP was the Alien Boy EP that led with that song. This one is the Do You Feel Me EP, um, which has the song Do You Feel Me on it, but... I'm not 100% positive why we're seeing this track on here, but I think it leads to why the last one's here. I think he needed two more tracks. It's, they yeah. said, let's pull this one from the previous album and throw in this one that we just kind of have. And I, I'm going to give my take on that. This is not a hot take. This is just my opinion. I think that he's got a bigger plan going on, or the label has a bigger plan going on than we understand. How yeah. Do You Feel is the name of the EP? Uh, do You Feel Me. I do think you this feel one me? better do as you a feel me? Do You Feel Me? That song on there is going to be a single on the next project. Yeah, guarantee well, the, last... the next EP is going to be called whatever the main mm-hmm. song is, and it's going to include "Do You Feel Me." I think if we were just looking at this project as a whole, we could have uh, "Alien Boy" is a great song, but seeing as he already has used it in a previous EP, I think he could have done without that one, and he could have done without the last one. I think as a four-track EP, this would have been a little bit more polished. It would have been solid. It would have yeah. been it would have been one hundred percent solid, and I probably wouldn't have felt the way I felt about the shortcomings that I have with the project. Mm-hmm. But overall, um, I feel like this was still a decent project. Oliver's still a reasonably new artist. You know, he hasn't he hasn't released a full studio length album under this uh, name yet. So I don't know if that's coming. I don't know if it's just gonna be you know singles and EPs like we're seeing right now. Um, but I do look forward to seeing a more polished and completed project in the future from him. Just, just kind of see what he's really capable of. And I think these are examples of some of the things he's trying to do with his music. And I think that's cool. But I really want to see something um, something 100% finished feeling from him in the future. And I feel like that'll partially come as just maturing as an artist. And, yeah. just, and just going through the trials and tribulations. And, and you know, by, by all means... I didn't know. I knew who this was. I didn't listen to any of his music. You showed it to me today. I will definitely be looking for the next project. I'll yeah. definitely be looking for the next single, the next video, because I'm interested now. Yeah. Even if I wasn't, it's didn't get everything I a, want from it. It's it's a good enough of a piece to kind of hook you in and be like, okay, I'll listen to the next thing that comes out. Yeah. yeah. No, 100%. And I love the production. I, as much as I don't love, I can't say production. I love the special effects. I love the vocal techniques. I love his stumbling cadences that he right. goes back to so this, often. All the structure. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. Yeah, the structures. Mm-hmm. The structures rather than the actual production itself. And I'm a huge fan of that. And I think it's a, a very well thought out project. It could just be a little bit more developed and a little bit more polished. Heck yeah. All right, well, uh, guys, let me know what you thought about this video, and listen to this album, Oliver Tree, Do You Feel Me? Let me know what you thought about it. Did you love it? Was it terrible? I don't know. Give me your notes. Um, as always, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to already access to videos like this one, you can check out the Patreon link in the video description. And as always, don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. Peace, guys. Yeah.